that you have a concept. The next step is, of course, to daydream about how wonderful and great and widespread your programming language is going to be. No, I'm just kidding. The next step is actually formalizing the grammar, writing down a formal specification of the grammar for this language. So uh, one of the tools that you can use, the most widespread one at least, is EBNF, which is extended backwards in our form. Now I'm going to try keeping things as informal as possible because I'm no professor. Uh, but this thing is basically a, a meta syntax, which is a syntax used to define other syntaxes, i.e. define formal languages, i.e. define programming languages, the grammar for programming languages. It's, um, it's made up of, you, you, can, uh, you can use production rules. So <clears throat> this is how it looks, right? You've got a non-terminal symbol on the left, and you've got a terminal symbol on the right, or this is um, the pipe symbol, and the pipe symbol is really the or, or another non-terminal on the right. So you can think about non-terminals, the one with uh, angular brackets here, as made up of, of more non-terminals or terminals. So these are the high level uh, building, these are the high level components, and these are the basic building blocks, the bricks. And you can you can use these to compose, to compose them and to get like higher order uh, abstractions, which are the non terminals. As an example, you can see in this grammar of the uh, C programming language that it has uh, 58 production rules, some of them are kind of complicated and messy, most are really understandable. You can you can have a look and, and read them. Uh, and one consequence of the fact that EBNF itself is a formal language is that you can have validators such as this one that I found online. Uh, you can actually use it to, to um, validate your code in EBNF and see if it conforms to the rules. And finally, this is going to be the proposed grammar for our language. There's just 17 production rules. It's very simple, stripped down. Uh, so uh, let's start from the topmost rule, the highest level. The program is going to be just a giant expression because everything is an expression, right? The expression is going to be defined as either a binary expression or a unary or a function call. This is probably not the best way of doing things, but let's go along. The function call is going to be an expression at the left. And then there's going to be, of course, the brackets, right? These are the brackets, the, one between, the ones between um, single uh, quotes. And the brackets are going to contain zero or more, the asterisk, the asterisk stands for zero or more of these, which is basically expression followed by a comma. So you can have, uh, you can have either a function that has no arguments, right? Or you can have a function that has any number of arguments. This means zero or more. The binary expression, this is going to be basically an expression and uh, then a binary operator, and then another expression. So you can see that this thing is recursive, right? Because, uh, because the binary, because the expression is defined in part as being a binary expression or a unary or et cetera, et cetera. The binary itself is defined as being an expression followed by another binary operator and then an expression. So this thing is recursive, right? It feeds into itself. You, you can have an arbitrarily nested uh, structure here of expressions inside of expressions inside of expressions. And this is a very nice and concise way of, of um, describing that. Uh, next up, the unary expression is either a simple value or a unary operator followed by a, any other expression. The simple value is a variable name, aka identifier, a number literal, a uh, string literal, a list, a dictionary, or a function literal, aka the lambda we were talking about before. Uh, or it can be a bracketed expression. So this is also uh, part of the whole recursive theme here. The variable name starts with an alphabetical character, which is a letter, 
uh, as is customary in most programming languages and can continue with any alphanumerical character, letter or number, zero, zero or more, as you can see, this is the asterisk. The string literal is basically uh, single quotes uh, encircling any number of zero or more alphanumerical characters. The list literal uh, looks like JavaScript. The dictionary literal also looks like a JavaScript object. The function literal uh, takes a bunch of um, parameters in this case and, uh, and maps them with this little funny arrow operator to another expression, right? Or it can take a, an expression and map it to another expression in case you want to drop those, uh, those, those brackets here. So in case you just have an X here as, as in the example here, right? Just an X. Uh, so yeah, the rest of this is basically just the number literal, the binary operators, some examples of numbers, and well, this is, this is all pretty easy. So yeah, uh, once you have this, you can actually start thinking about the lexer.